Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ivan Vukpavlovich. I'm here with my good friend, Russell P. Firestone. This is, I think, uh, the ninth installment of the Sophisticated Shut-In. And what is it? Is it the fourth that we're doing together, Russell? Uh, I believe so. I no, mean, no. So oh, yeah. Well, I don't even keep track of it anymore. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Time is... I find time so elastic. <laughs> yeah. In the twilight zone here. <laughs> uh, um, so it is April 22nd of 2020. I anticipate this episode will uh, probably air a week from tonight on the 29th. Uh, and we are still you know, for, for all the future generations, uh, we are still in the big uh, COVID-19 shutdown. It's like the Spanish flu, uh, Mark II. Tonight, we are going to discuss two topics, both related in uh, effort. The effort, one, that it takes to put together outfits on a day-to-day -day basis uh, if one wants to get into um, classic menswear and look good. And then secondly, the effort required to maintain that wardrobe. Uh, we touched on maintenance a little bit last time, more in the sense that once you build a basic classic menswear wardrobe, um, it doesn't require much to maintain it from the point of view that high quality clothing, which is properly cared for, will last a very, very long time. So every now and again, you might need to replace a particular jacket or a particular pair of trousers or a particular suit. But once that basic wardrobe is established, unless you want to, like Russell and I, uh, you don't actually need to spend a lot of time worrying about your wardrobe and maintaining its presence, right? And, and uh, the number of available garments uh, to you. However, there is the effort that goes into maintaining the well-being of that uh, wardrobe, which does require some day-to-day -day effort. Um, so I should say that it really helps if you are into clothes. You know, there are a lot of things that both Russell and I enjoy as far as the maintenance uh, is concerned of our wardrobe. Um, they tend not to be the same thing. Like uh, Russell mentioned uh, that he enjoys ironing. You know, uh, he finds it I guess, soothing or therapeutic. I don't know. You, you can speak to that better than I can. And uh, you'll have plenty of opportunity to do so. Um, you know, I actually, uh, I'm not huge into ironing. I, I do it when I have to. I do it mainly to reinforce creases in my trousers, things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a fan of the quick steam of uh, garments than need it, et cetera. But we'll talk about what kind of garments require a fair amount of maintenance, what kind of uh, garments do not, and how we can keep uh, efficiently our wardrobe looking good and uh, being ready to go, ready to wear, mm -hmm. right? Um, before we get started, as always, uh, I'd like to talk about what I'm wearing, and then uh, I'd like Russell to talk about what he's wearing. I am uh, in, what is for me an unusual ensemble because uh, I'm wearing a black shirt, which is something I tend not to do. But I wanted to showcase it with this suit because I think it works particularly well to show the range of the suit that I'm wearing. And this suit is one of my absolute favorite pieces. It's, it, it doesn't really come across in this kind of low quality video, but um, it is my custom Hickey Freeman uh, medium to light silver gray suit, which has um, 
some silk in it. It's a silk wool blend, very lightweight, um, very comfortable. And generally speaking, a suit of this shade, I would relegate to day wear. You know, to me, it's not dark enough for a true evening suit. However, at more casual evening gatherings, when I pair it with a black shirt, I think it's actually a really great evening look. And I don't know if you can see, I've got my little uh, skull pattern pocket square in there. Um, you know, as an ex-goth, uh, I, I used to be really into the goth scene back in my New York musician days. Uh, generally, everyone just wears black, 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 and black, right? Um, this kind of ensemble is something like uh, I would show up to any goth event and uh, stand out, but still be completely within the range of acceptability to uh, the vampires. Um, so the trousers of the suit, of course, do not have belt loops. Today, I'm not even wearing uh, braces with them. Uh, in, in this uh, quarantine environment, I've put on enough pounds to wear the pants fit quite snugly enough to where they're not moving anywhere. Um, I put nice uh, inch and a half cuffs on this suit because to me it is a slightly more leisurely suit, so uh, a little less formal. Um, I'm wearing light gray herringbone uh, over the calf socks. And you know, uh, with this kind of suit, since I'm not wearing a tie, I'm, if I were wearing shoes, uh, I'd probably either go with my black penny loafers, maybe my black bit loafers, maybe my uh, black derbies, uh, probably not Oxfords. So I, I tend to reserve Oxfords for when I'm wearing a tie. Uh, all right. How you doing, Russell? What, what are you in today? Looking very dapper. I'm doing well. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm... Pretty simple and casual here at home. Uh, a lot of times, uh, if I don't have anywhere to go, uh, as far as going out anywhere in the day, I'll keep it pretty simple and casual. Um, so today, I've got just a basic white dress shirt going on here. This one is not a button down. I think in all the other videos, I've been wearing button downs. This one's just a, it's a spread collar, which I think, Spread collars work really well if you're not going to be wearing a tie uh, mm -hmm. because of just the way the collar lays. And whenever I'm talking about spread, it's just the width between the points. Or the uh, severity of the, of the angle. Right. Yeah, that's right. So a spread is going to be a little bit wider than uh, probably a typical American uh, point collar. Mm -hmm. uh, spread, I think, is more associated with British style yes. uh, than American. So, um, but it's generally for, European, I would, uh, I would say. Yeah, that, that's a good way of putting it. Um, but it works really well uh, if you're not wearing a tie and if mm -hmm. you're just going to wear it open, which a lot of people like to do nowadays. And the other nice thing about it is if I was wearing a sport coat or a suit coat or something, the spread collar tucks nicely in under the lapels. Yes, it does. Uh, it's not just going to be flying away on you or it's not going to look frumpy in some way without a tie. Uh, I'm also wearing, i uh, get a little closer, it's an ascot uh, or a cravat, and this is uh, something Yvonne and I, uh, we both have an affinity for. Mm -hmm. um, the ascot to me, and this is something we'll get into on the topic today, is it's a great way, not very many guys want to wear them anymore. Uh, you don't, rarely do you ever see anybody in an ascot. Uh, it is a piece, I think, that takes a little bit of confidence at first uh, to be willing to wear. But once you get into them, uh, you'll find that they are a great accessory. Yeah, to have in your wardrobe. They, uh, they just kind of pull more casual looks together, but they can also be an extremely formal piece, too. Um, uh, but they work great. And this, again, uh, this is a shirt, actually. Uh, I got with you, Yvonne, um, 
West and Andrew J. Oh, okay. uh, but it's a it's their classic cut. A lot mm -hmm. of shirts nowadays are a little bit trimmer, and this is the classic cut. And I, I think this shirt in a classic cut just works great with a, with a cravat because, the cravat in itself uh, adds a little touch of elegance, but it's also it's a little bit looser than a tie. Oh uh, yes, it's the more coquettish sister of the tie, so to speak. Yeah, uh, okay. it's definitely it's, a, a little more casual. Yeah, a little bit more casual. And uh, the fullness of the cut of this shirt, especially when I'm not wearing a jacket, it just adds to that leisurely kind of flowy look that I think looks really nice. Um, but it's definitely not contemporary in the sense that a lot of shirts that uh, most people would want to buy nowadays are going to be mm -hmm. a little bit trimmer than this one. But I, you know, I'm always saying, I mean, don't be afraid. Uh, <laughs> Of the Think to the future. <laughs> That's right. Well, the future and just, uh, I, I just, I always find that, uh, you know, people uh, in the past, they weren't doing it all wrong. They, you know, so don't right. just abandon it just because you think it's old fashioned. Uh, there's a lot of pluses to contemporary cuts. Uh, and then uh, you can't see it, but I'm just wearing navy cotton trousers. And uh, I'm actually wearing just some black uh, full brogue wingtip shoes. Um, nothing too fancy. What I like to do with, uh, if I'm going to wear like the cravat or any piece, especially in modern times, it might stand out a little bit more is to make everything else simple. very basic and simple. You don't, and that will help carry it off uh, and it won't attract undue attention. And then, you know, this look actually, um, I mean, all the great dressers, uh, at least people that uh, I consider great dressers, Fred Astaire, Cary Grant, I mean, they all had a cravat in there at some point. Oh, yes. And, uh, um, and one movie, if you're ever so inclined to seek it out, it's great on a great way to wear a cravat. Uh, was actually to catch a thief. There's a lot of good. Um, that uh, striped, uh, striped, uh, long sleeve uh, mock neck, right? Well, no, uh, I know which outfit you're talking about in the, in the beginning. This was the one I'm thinking of. Was a little bit later, about midway through the film. Because uh, that's actually a neckerchief, anyway, right? Yeah. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. Carrie was wearing a cravat in there, and uh, with with a full cut white shirt i mean he ended up putting a blazer a gray blazer over it but it's just a great look that um you should definitely look into i wouldn't suggest starting there does it does take a bit of confidence uh and that's one of the keys to pulling it off is that you are confident in the look right but um but don't ignore it just because you don't see very many other people wearing it oh indeed it's a, it's a great reason to do it mm-hmm um, okay, let's get into the topic of the day. Um, oh, and when you said uh, navy uh, cotton pants, I'm assuming uh, you're talking about uh, chinos? Yes. Uh, pleated and cuffed? Oh, of course. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Just, just making sure. Um, effort. As I mentioned before, it does help if you get into this because I'm hoping that it comes across that both Russell and I, I uh, have a lot of fun thinking about clothes, putting together outfits uh, for different occasions, for different moods, how we would like to be perceived in putting together outfits for particular occasions uh, that we feel project a certain way, etc. But I will also say that if you aren't into it and you don't actually want to think about being put together but still need to be put together, a basic classic wardrobe is probably the easiest way to achieve that. Oh, uh, yeah. So... The way that I approach putting together outfits, 
is generally speaking, it starts with one item. You know, I get up in the morning and as I'm showering and get my grooming together, um, I start thinking about one piece of clothing that I want to wear that day. Unless it's a special day and I'm either having a meeting with particular person or have a certain event that I'm attending and all of that, those things will generally dictate sometimes even an entire outfit down to the last detail of uh, accessories or sometimes just like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm doing a business meeting, so I should wear like a charcoal suit with a burgundy tie because I got to close a deal or whatever, right? <laughs> um, which never happens. Um, but usually if it's just a regular day, it starts with, you know what? I really want to wear these pants today. Or, you know, I haven't worn this tie in a really long time. Or whatever, this shirt. And then it just goes on from there. Uh, sometimes like, okay, well, uh, I want to wear my gray flannel pants. What goes well with that? And what have I not worn with that pant before? Sometimes that's, that, that, that's a really big motivator. Like how have I worn this pant? And how can I expand my palette for that pant? Then if it's a dress pant, I might see if there's a sports shirt that I have that I can actually pull off with it or I'll uh, see if I can dress it up more than I have before. But at any rate, that's, that's usually my personal kind of attack um, on such things. However, let's say that you're not stupid and crazy like me, but you want to actually just get on with your life every day. You need to be put together. Um, if you have a basic uh, capsule classic wardrobe, it is actually quite easy with an initial period of investment mentally to put together a set of pieces where you would actually have to go out of your way to mismatch things, to, to get it wrong. You know, if you have, let's say, a battery of suits, classic sports coats, blazers, some slacks, some shirts, ties, pocket squares, stuff like that. If you put the entirety of the wardrobe together in such a way that most things work with most other things, you can find yourself in a situation where you can just basically reach into the closet on any given day, put stuff on in just about any combination. And even though it's not going to be 100% foolproof, you literally spend 10 seconds thinking about it and you're going to be put together very, very well. And this is where people like me, your friendly clothier, can really help you with that. And before I turn it over to Russell, who I know will have a, a lot of insight to this, um, I will say that one thing that happens very often in my line of work, I mean, on a very regular basis, is men come in because, you know, honestly, a lot of the time their wives tell them, you know, honey, your suits look like crap. You bought them all 15 years ago and you followed fashion trends instead of, uh, you know, classic style and you need to get your crap together because you're a lawyer and you don't look right, you know, and they come in very reluctantly and w they don't want to be there at first. And I was like, I got to do this. I got to buy five suits and a bunch of shirts and a bunch of ties. But then when they see the passion that I and people like myself 
of myself have towards the subject, not only because we love clothing, but we love helping people um, do themselves better, you know? Um, they actually not only uh, enjoy the process and actually enjoy coming in, but their entire uh, demeanor towards dressing changes because they see that you can actually be someone into clothing who looks good um, without coming off as coquettish, to, to use a great word that you used, um, and ultimately, you don't really have to invest a lot of effort and time into it once you get your basics down, you know? So it's a vast world where you can treat it as a downright hobby, like Russell and I do, where we love investing time and effort into it. But at the same time, it is absolutely the best way to go if you know you have to look good, but maybe you're too busy, maybe you have no interest, maybe you have other interests more important to you, all these things are great, that once you put that initial mental investment into it, uh, from then on, uh, the effort required to look good is actually quite minimal. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll hand it over to you, Russell, to, uh, to get your take on it. Well, just the first thing I'll start with is adding on to what you were just saying. Um, is another thing that's interesting, um, is I would say, in a lot of ways, you can be argued I can understand in a different way, but in a lot of ways, it's easier now to look good uh, than it ever has been. Um, and what I mean by that is just the, uh, a lot of the technology in the way uh, garments are constructed and the fabrics, especially how they're made, mm -hmm. um, are so much easier and we'll get into caring for them than a lot of stuff was in the past. And uh, so, I mean, it's easier if you just put uh, the effort into it to look better today in a lot of ways than it ever was, plus just the access to, um, uh, not only to clothing, but to ideas just because of the internet, you can go and you can search and you can see, um, classic looks and photographs of, you know, just thousands of photographs of people, uh, that a lot of people just didn't even have access to not that long ago, uh, sure. which will help give you ideas. Um, but just getting back to more on a daily basis, um, it's not difficult. Uh, once you learn the basics of dressing uh, to look good on a daily basis. And um, like Yvonne was saying, uh, it's easy to get overwhelmed if you let yourself. Uh, the, the key thing is always just think simplicity. Uh, Yvonne and I always joke that, you know, we want to be as boring as possible. Mm -hmm. um, because what you find is to be well-dressed, the more you get into dressing or to be perceived, I guess, as being well-dressed, the more boring you're dressed. Generally, you'll find that people just think you're better dressed. And when you're out and about, you'll get comments. Uh, the more loudly you dress, a lot of times uh, people perceive you as not being as well-dressed. Uh, but it took more effort to dress loudly a lot of times uh, than it does just to dress very simply. So that's kind of my first thing is tell people just be simple in your thoughts. Don't try and go overboard, but you'll get better the more that you do dress. Uh, just to interject uh, very quickly, uh, I don't want to uh, take you off, off this uh, topic, but uh, the way I always look at it, looked at it is that clothing is the picture frame. It's not the picture itself. The wearer is the picture. So the clothing is there to support the picture. And you know, there's, there's a whole art to matching a frame to a great photograph or a great painting or something like that. And you want it to complement the, the art, but you don't want it to detract from it. 
So that's why simple outfits often are a better frame to the person and the personality than loud garish ones. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, if you're truly being traditional about dressing, I mean, you can take it all the way back to uniforms. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, the whole point was focus people's attention on your face and your personality and what you have to say, not what you're wearing. All the rest of it was just there to present a, a, a nice picture, but that the whole point was it was to draw the attention up to you. That's uh, right. And we, we owe a lot of that kind of uh, attitude to Bo Brummel, of course. He was sure. probably the, the, the first, what was that, like late 1800s? Yeah. Um, before then, you, you, you take a look at a lot of the paintings and illustrations of, of well-dressed men, and they're just in preposterous, bright, you know, uh, frilly kind of uh, outfits. It was Bo Bromel that actually just pared it down to very monochromatic, simple ensembles, where it was really more about letting the personality of the wearer shine through. That's right. And um, I think... Um, Anybody just trying to dress on a daily basis um, is, like I said, keep it simple. And to gain an understanding of, of the neutrals uh, and what basically, it's not technically a neutral, it's a color, but it can almost act as a neutral. Navy being one of those colors. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You uh, can basically work with almost anything. But when I say neutrals, just for anybody who doesn't know, I'm talking about like white, uh, brown, black, uh, your gray, <laughs> gray, anything on the gray scale. Uh, <laughs> the most black. important neutral. Yeah. <laughs> gray is probably the most versatile. Oh, <laughs> you, you don't have to tell me. <laughs> All right. And then just, uh, you know, just to, to gain an understanding of that. And that's where I'll start. If I have something in mind, like you say, or there's an event, that I'm going to that's driving uh, what I should be wearing, uh, well, then go with that. I mm -hmm. mean, if you've already thought out what you want to wear or there's an event kind of dictating what you need to wear, then go with that. But if you're just getting up and you're like, oh, man, I got to get dressed today, I always say just, you know, keep it simple and just go with neutrals. Start with a neutral. Yeah. Uh, I always take into account what's the weather going to be like? Is it, you know, what season am I in? So what clothes go best with that? And then I'll pick a neutral. Like usually um, if I'm wearing a jacket, I'll try and think out which jacket I want to wear. Uh, and by that, like a sport coat or if I'm wearing a suit, that's the easiest because the trousers are going to match the jacket. But if you're wearing a sport coat or a blazer, uh, if that's where you want to start, you can. Or like a Vaughn, you can start with the trousers. Um, or anything, yeah. Yeah. And then just work from there. Just stay with your neutrals. You don't have to add tons of color in every day. I mean, usually uh, I think uh, men look best when they're mainly dressed in neutrals. Yes. Um, you can. It's important to add color. But, I mean. Well, I will also say that, you know, for the person who doesn't want to invest a lot of time on a day-to-day -day basis thinking about what they're going to wear, the fact is if you're the type who has to wear tailored clothing to work, you're a lawyer or whatever, yeah. uh, you know, I still maintain if you stick to simple dark gray and navy suits, white shirts, light blue shirts, if your complexion uh, allows for it, uh, you know, even like a blush pink, uh, if you have a dark enough uh, complexion to to handle it or, or a cool enough uh, undertone to your uh, complexion. Um, and then you stick with just, you know, nice navy and burgundy ties. You can literally pull any of these things out of your closet in any order and any combination and you can't get it wrong. Right. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, also, if you have like a nice navy blazer, pair of charcoal slacks, 
a pair of khaki slacks, maybe some light gray slacks. You take any of those pants, your navy blazer, any of those shirts, you're done. That's it. It doesn't well, matter. That, that's, I think, yeah, what we'll touch on more later is, yeah, and building that wardrobe, that's what's important, is you don't want to end up with just, you know, having no guidance or not thinking about it uh, in the beginning to where you just end up with a bunch of orphaned pieces. Right, right. Yeah. That's why uh, it helps to work with a clothier to kind of guide you through that initial outlay to where your garments are going to be so versatile that you can get a lot of different looks out of each one, you know, uh, so that uh, you don't have to buy entire separate outfits, but elements of outfits that will work with other elements to create multiple outfits, right? Because if you're just going outfit, 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 each one of those outfits is going to cost X amount of money. But then if you can actually work so that you can cross pollinate, if you will, and have many different elements work with many different other elements, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about last time, the, the cost efficiency, right? Um, it just grows exponentially. You have so many more outfits at a lower and lower, lower cost per wear mm -hmm. um, just across the board. Well, and that's, yeah, exactly. And that's the, that's what fashion is trying to take advantage of is just your lack of understanding of how to dress and, um, you know, the fact that they're putting the look together for you and you have right. to buy the whole look and you, a lot of times if you don't have a, uh, a lot of skill in dressing, every time you're having to buy their whole look. So they're making more versus with class. I mean, style, to be fair, there are people who are well-versed enough in fashion, high fashion, where that's not the case, right? And they right. are buying individual pieces and putting them together into their own individual look. So I don't want to like poo-poo on any, uh, you know, uh, but, but you're right that in fashion, there definitely exists that target audience where a lot of people be just like, oh, this is the runway look for XYZ uh, design or XYZ season. And there are a lot of people who just buy into it, hook, line, and sinker, you know, and just buy these outfits. And then that's just what they wear for that season. And then they give them away to Goodwill or whatnot and start over uh, the next season. And uh, there's a lot of money in that. However, there's another thing in fashion, and I, I don't want to diver diverge too, too much from her topic. The fact is that most money in the high fashion doesn't come from high fashion. It's the diffusion lines where a designer will put together a series of very high end, very high quality garments every season, but most people aren't buying that. They're buying lesser quality versions based on those looks, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why, you know, you have uh, you know, uh, different levels of Armani, you know, very few people are actually, well, actually a lot of people are buying the high end Armani, but then there's like the diffusion Armani brands that aren't the top of the line, which are built like crap. They fall apart, you know, and that's, and, and they're cheaply and quickly made, but you're still paying a crap ton of money for them. And that's where, they're really making the money, mm -hmm. you know? At any rate, let's move on to the effort in care for the clothing. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that if you dress truly traditionally and classically, uh, there is an element of care that you don't have to deal with if you're just wearing athleisure all the time. But like you, Russell, mentioned earlier, there have been incredible advances in textiles. And like you mentioned, 
you're wearing a shirt from Andrew J, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which is a company I don't think it exists anymore. <laughs> But uh, there are companies uh, which uh, make similar products. Uh, the, the, you know, leave it to Russell. That's how classic Russell is. <laughs> you know, he, he exclusively oh, wears uh, wears uh, clothing that is no longer made. Um, so, for example, if you get um, a bunch of classic clothing, first of all, when it comes to any kind of truly tailored clothing, and I'm talking suits, sports coats, slacks, and all of that. We already touched on the fact that uh, most people dry clean that stuff way, way more often than they should or need to. You know, the fact is that all of that stuff is made from high quality moisture wicking materials. As long as you let it dry out, you hit it with a steamer to get the major wrinkles out if needed. Um, and in fact, a lot of the, the, the materials these days just the weight of the garment hanging on the hanger will over a day or two take out most of the major wrinkles. I mean, the, the weaves that uh, the best mills are achieving these days are incredible. Like the, they are achieving wrinkle resistance without any chemical treatments, strictly through the weave. Um, so in that regard, Unlike a lot of, you know, a lot of people, what's the, you know, the de facto uniform these days in, let's say, Silicon Valley is, you know, you're wearing your jeans, you're wearing a t-shirt, and you're wearing a hoodie. That t-shirt and hoodie and jeans probably, all those people don't wash their jeans, which is, you know. <laughs> Uh, a subject for another day. Um, if you're lucky, they're all cotton. And cotton is a naturally moisture absorbing material. So much like cotton dress shirts, they really should be laundered after every time you wear them. Uh, some people, you know, uh, with cotton sports shirts that aren't stark white, maybe get two wears out of them. Um, however, you know, once you sweat into that hoodie, you're going to have to wash it. And that washing is going to wear it out more than actually wearing it. And you're going to just be buying this kind of clothing all the time and always, you're always laundering it. Whereas with a good sports coat, good slacks, good suit, as I mentioned, you can get dozens of wears out of it before any kind of cleaning. Um, so in that regard, the effort is six of one, half a dozen of the other. Unlike a pair of jeans and a hoodie that you can literally throw on the floor and then pick up the next day and put back on, you're going to have to at least take care to, you know, let your suit air out and then hang it up properly. But, um... I think anyone who takes pride in their appearance spends more time brushing their teeth any, uh, every day anyway, right? Like, uh, we're, we're not talking about someone who is a complete slob in everyday life and now comparing them to someone who actually takes pride in how they present themselves. We're talking about someone who takes pride and is now interested in venturing out into a classic wardrobe. Um, the shirts, if they're traditional, will have to be laundered properly. Now, in the case of people like Russell, he actually enjoys that. He likes laundering his own shirts. He likes uh, ironing them and all of that. Most people who wear that kind of stuff on a regular basis, because they have to, or if, even if they like to, uh, we'll simply get them laundered. And, uh, you know, it's that weekly or uh, bi-weekly uh, trip to the dry cleaner where they just drop off a bunch of stuff and they pick it up the day after. So, you know, it's an errand much akin like running to the bank or getting groceries. It's just part of your uh, 
uh, life routine. And then finally, I wanted to mention, because uh, Andrew, Andrew J, but uh, for example, uh, Andrew J was a copy of a, um, a different brand, Eaton, E-T-O-N, which is the shirt I'm wearing. Um, and uh, Brooks Brothers has uh, shirts that uh, share this quality and, and many other manufacturers make a non-iron shirt. And with that, I, I like non-iron shirts, you know, I, because you wash them, you hang them to dry and they're ready to go. So these are the kind of advances. And I, I, I don't know exactly who first uh, came up with this technology. Uh, it may even be Brooks Brothers, I don't know. Um, but uh, for example, Eaton is known, that that's one of their selling points is that it's a true wash and wear shirts and they actually come at it from an environmentalist perspective. They don't want you to be using dry cleaners. So they came up with this technology where you can simply launder a shirt, let it dry, and it's ready to wear. So if you put a little bit of initial effort into researching these brands or talking to your clothier about it, they can actually get you into garments which are going to look fantastic, but really don't require a lot of day-to-day -day effort in order to keep uh, looking good. Any, uh, anything you'd like to add on that subject? Oh, uh, I was just gonna say, you know, it's kind of, um, one thing you find with dressing in general, or um, any of what you might consider the more classic arts of manhood, is they're all skills. Um, yes. Uh, you're, you've gotta kind of get into it and, um, you know, talk to people uh, that are more versed in it and you'll learn as you go. I mean, everybody makes mistakes in purchasing garments and caring for garments and that sort of thing. Uh, but once you start to gain an understanding of how to take care of things, which basically just means, you know, if you're buying quality clothes, don't treat them like crap. Don't just throw them on the floor, take them off and just throw them on the floor or just rumple them up and, uh, you know, just, you know, throw them over the back of a chair at the end of the day. Uh, you want to hang your clothes. Um, like if you're talking about um, a suit or a sport coat, always when you take it off, um, hang it on a hanger. Uh, if it, I wouldn't recommend putting it right back into the closet. Um, let it air out. Yep. That's right. You want to let it air out. Um, and a lot of times, especially like, you know, a lot of people might be wondering, I mean, I smoke a pipe a lot. It's like, well, don't you, doesn't that make your clothes stink? And it's, you know, not really. I mean, number one, pipe smoke is not like a lot of other smoke. It doesn't clean. It doesn't hang around like cigarette smoke or cigar smoke will. But um, a lot of people might think, well, you have to dry clean your clothes a lot. And it's like, no. Um, a lot of times, if anything has any kind of a smell, just hit it with the steamer. Uh, That's right. Yeah, the steam will a lot of times take that right out and you don't smell anything. Um, and that's kind of the key is to always, um, you know, whenever you think something needs to be dry clean, a lot of times it might just need to be steamed or left. Steamed in the air out. Yep. Yeah, hang and air out. So do that with your clothes. Uh, same thing goes with trousers. Uh, whenever you hang them up, especially if you've been wearing them for a day, a lot of people, you know, the traditional way they think of to hold or to hang trousers is, you know, hang them over the bar, stick them back in the closet. Um, if you'll hang them, uh, if you just get some simple uh, uh, clothespins mm -hmm. or uh, hangers with clips on it, and you just hang the trousers the full length. Uh, either hang them in your closet that way and just leave them like that. Or um, if you just want to let them hang that way overnight, it'll take a lot of the wrinkles out. Yes. And I should say, if you are doing that, it's actually better to hang the trousers up by not the waistband, but by the cuff or the hem, because right. then all of the tailoring, which is mostly in the waistband and the crotch and all of that, the weight of that will pull down on the trouser and further take those, uh, those uh, wrinkles out and reinforce that crease and stuff like that, yeah. That's it. Um, and then, uh, I mean, you can take this as deep as you want. Uh, with the shirts, 
like Yvonne was saying, um, I've always been somebody who likes to wear an iron shirt. It's just a thing with me. Um, and I've ironed so many shirts, just thousands of shirts in my <laughs> lifetime, that it's not that big of a deal. Um, now, somebody who's not used to ironing, it's going to be a pain in the ass. I mean, there's yeah. no way around that. Yeah, I, I don't like it, personally. Right. Uh, but you can buy shirts um, that are non-iron, um, that don't require uh, you to iron them every time you wear them, and you can just wash them yourself, and that's the key. Or, you know, if you think about it, you know, if you buy, like, just an all-cotton shirt, it's going to be a good shirt. But if it's not... Um, you know, treated in any way, it'll need to be ironed. And if you don't want to do it, you know, if you take it to have it laundered, it's not super expensive to have no. it laundered and pressed. I personally, I like to iron my own stuff because you have to, then you get into the whole thing about trying to find a decent cleaners. Yeah. A lot of them are pretty bad nowadays and they can ruin your clothes. Yes. Uh, and, or, you know, you'll start noticing buttons cracked on your shirts and that sort of thing. Yeah. That's why I, like, I just like to take care of my own stuff. Uh, for me, the wardrobe, it's an investment and it's something I care about and I appreciate. So I don't mind taking care of it myself. Um, but yeah, don't be dry cleaning your clothes, um, like your your wool garments all the time. That'll, that's like Yvonne said, that'll wear them out faster than anything. Yeah. Um, and also if you launder your own shirts at home, uh, I mean, pay attention to the care label in the shirt, but a lot of them, the last thing you want to do is just always run them through the dryer cycle all the way to the end. I will say this. I, the only thing that I dry is undergarments, uh -huh. socks, I, underwear, undershirts. I, I avoid the dryer as if it were the plague because that is really what wears out a garment. Oh, for sure. And I mean, what I find uh, works really well is if you, after you've washed your shirts, uh, if you want, you can put them in the dryer for about somewhere between five and 10 minutes, no longer. Just let that, basically let it get hot, let the mm. fabric warm up and then pull them and put them on a hanger and that'll knock out mm. a lot of the wrinkles in itself. And if you just pull sure. it straight out of the wash, it's going to be really wrinkled mm -hmm. uh, if it's a non-iron shirt. Um, yeah. But it's also, I'll tell people, you know, if you don't dress, um, if you don't have to dress every day or uh, it's just not something you're going to do, but you're interested in it, it's not that hard to iron one or two shirts a week either. I mean, if oh, no. Exactly, no. Yeah. I mean, it's plus a lot of times um, people over launder their clothing too. It's uh, if a shirt, if you didn't sweat into it, uh, severely that day, uh, or it's just really not dirty. It probably doesn't need to be washed and you can probably wear, especially if it's a, wh a white shirt or a blue shirt, something that's a staple in most people's wardrobes, you can wear those sometimes, uh, a couple days in a week. And then that just cuts down on the total amount of laundry you have to do and the amount of care that you would have to do. And it's not going to harm the garment. Uh, yeah. Especially if you're just wearing it leisurely to an event, right? Like uh, if I'm wearing a white shirt all day, I will wash it, you know, after one wear, you know, yeah. like if, if, if you're wearing it like all day, but if I'm wearing a white shirt for a handful of hours, because I'm just getting dressed for an event and I didn't like sweat into it. Absolutely. I'll wear it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I think we, we more or less covered what we need to. Uh, do you, is there anything else you'd like to say before I announce the topic for our next uh, get together? Mm. No, I just, I think that um, if you view, like I was saying a minute ago, your wardrobe is an investment and is something that um, the reason that you're buying it, it's, it, it, it's for you in the way you know that you enjoy it and how you feel but a, a lot of it has to do with that's what other people have to stare at all day long not you and that's the that's the ultimate benefit in it or the reason to look at it as a as an asset or an investment um is that 
people perceive you differently when you dress well. You can be the exact same person, but when you dress well, people do perceive you differently and therefore take care of your investment. You know, view it that way and it'll last you even longer. So that's my uh, so speech there. Yeah, very well put. Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, this episode will likely air on the 29th of April. Uh, the next episode, we're going to do something a little bit different in that for men who are interested in uh, starting to wear classic menswear, maybe they haven't before, maybe now they're interested, um, where do you start? And Russell and I will each individually be coming up with a short list of garments uh, that we suggest as a good starting point, uh, knowing Russell and myself, um, we are probably each going to, uh, try to come up with a, you know, a list that's probably going to be, I don't know, 10 or a dozen things, uh, putting together, you know, a couple of different core outfits that can be expanded on, uh, things like that, uh, and also are going to be versatile garments, like we touched on before, you know, uh, stuff that isn't going to be outfit based, but more just a couple of outfits as starting points that can be then incorporated with other items to quickly expand on the palette available. And, uh, so we will, in the interim, each come up with our own list. And then for, during the episode, we're going to compare lists and see how much overlap there is. I have a feeling that it's going to be probably a nearly identical list, but <laughs> one way to find out. Um, one thing I'll add, just yeah. real quick, I forgot, um, and it's important, um, is to tell people in caring for your wardrobe also take care of your shoes yes that you never want to just let your shoes go to crap and uh have them just looking terrible uh, a lot of people i i see this you know being a barber one thing i see uh in people i see a lot of obviously just male clients that's my primary client and you know once i throw that cape over them the only thing i see really from that point on are their shoes. And I'll say that most people don't take care of their shoes all that well. I mean, I see people that just, their shoes look awful. And you can ruin an otherwise well put together outfit by pairing it with a shoes that just obviously are uh, out of shape. And so just be sure to pay. I don't know, I don't know who said this, but, and I'm grossly paraphrasing, but uh, uh, the quote is essentially, if you want to know whether or not a man is well-dressed, look down. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, you know, uh, I did a whole uh, episode on my shoe collection and I didn't really touch upon this, but you know, since this is the care and effort episode, we should say that actually taking care of a high quality pair of dress shoes is actually very, very simple. It comes down to three main things, in my view. Uh, keep the leather conditioned, mm -hmm. meaning don't let it dry out. Uh, use shoe trees, because uh, between wears, right? Um, four things. Uh, <laughs> uh, because shoe trees will uh, take out any uh, perspiration moisture and the cedar, which they tend to be made out of, uh, will take care of any odors. Use shoe horns so that you're not crushing the back of the shoe when you're putting them on. And finally, try not to wear the same pair of shoes uh, two days in a row. Let them recover. That's it. If you do that, and then every once in a while resole them, and I'm talking like every, you know, I mean, I have, I don't know, probably about 15 pair of dress shoes. I resole shoes like I because my rotation is such that I'm almost never wearing any one particular pair of shoes. I almost never need to resole them. But uh, yeah, uh, sh shoes are an incredibly easy thing to take care of 
but so many people drop the ball. Oh, for sure. Well, and again, it's because it's, it's just, it's another skill. It's not hard. Yeah. Uh, but it's just something that you got to, at first glance, seems like, well, I don't know how to take care of a quality leather shoe. And so it'll take just a little bit of time and effort. But if you have somebody who knows how to, knows what they're doing with that, it's, it's real easy to learn. And it's, it's not hard to do. It takes just a few minutes. And you can, yeah. you know, if you just, like you say, at least conditioning leather. And if you want to shine your shoes, uh, which I think, um, like I have more of an affinity for putting a shine on my shoes, I think, than you do. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big fan. I, I, I actually prefer a more natural, uh, you know, uh, look where you, where you see the, the, the texture and the grain of, of a leather shoe. But I understand the desire for a nice shine, too. Like, I mean, I'm sure. they're both great, great looks. I just prefer the other, which, which is good for me because uh, I actually only really need to condition my shoes and then hit them with a nice horsehair brush. And I'm good to go. You know? Oh yeah, but all this is not hard to learn. It is just no. something you got to put a little bit of effort into, and um, but it it pays such huge dividends in life that that's the whole point of it. It does. Plus, it's it's fun <laughs> <laughs> for some people. For some people, it is. Yeah. Well, all right. With that, uh, we will uh, see everyone next time. Uh, where again, we will, uh, Russell and I will be comparing notes on the starting point of a classic wardrobe. Uh, thank you, Russell. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll see you next time.